I often get asked, how can I find out who is searching for me online? Many times people are searching for information on other people, be it for employment purposes, business competitors, individuals and in new relationships, family, friends, and yes, even Snoopy neighbors. Now the answer to how you can find out who is searching for you gets a bit tricky. So make sure you take some notes here. This does take a bit of work on your part, but the payoff can be worth it if you really need to know who is searching for you online. The first thing I would suggest if you are not a PI is to maybe hire a PI to help you with this. Some of the data and information you will gather will require investigation itself. And having access to PI databases today can often help with that. But there is one almost surefire way to figure out who it is, and we will discuss that in just a moment. When someone searches for you, they will usually do a search with your first and last name, many times in quotes, and they will come up with a ton of web pages that have your name in them. Then they go to those web pages, they read about you, they grab photos of you, and document all the information about you, and they may even save the web page for future reference. What I do to help me figure out who is searching for me online is to set up a trap page or what is often referred to as a honeypot page on the internet. In order to set this up, I first do a search on myself. I go out there online and I grab some of the information that is already out there about me and some photos that are already out there and I save that for reference. I then will take that information and use it to compile my honeypot page. So I'm using the same data that is already out there. I'm not offering anything new, just adding more of the same. This video is sponsored by OREP Insurance and Working PI Magazine. OREP is a leading provider of private investigator liability insurance. Visit OREP.org for a quote today. But I write it up to ensure the page is written perfectly for SEO, search engine optimization, so the search engines will show it when people search for my name. Then I might go out and purchase a specific domain with my name in it or something relevant to my name or some key events in my life. Now I would make sure when I buy this domain it is not tied directly to me. I would leave all of the contact info in the host company's name so people can't do a who is lookup and find more personal information about me. Then I would put that information up in a logical way. It may be a professional page that talks about you, your work experience, things like that, sort of like an online resume. Me. Or it might be a personal blog page and you could even feed it with some daily or weekly information to help keep it fresh and to help entice whoever is searching for you to come back often to get more information or even subscribe to the blog. Whatever you put up though, make sure it is information you want to be out there. Don't put up personal info, personally identifying details or things like that. Remember, once it is on the internet, it is always on the internet. Even if you take the page down at some point, it will still exist in archives out there. Now that you have your honeypot page stock full of information about you, it is time to set the trap. You want to set up the page to use cookies to track people's usage. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about doing this. You can get lots of information on how to do that on YouTube or on the internet. But by using cookies, you are able to grab lots of detail about the people who visit your website, like their IP address, their general location, what page they came from to get to your site, what search terms they use to find your page, and more. Cookies can also track how often they came to visit your page. If it is a potential employer seeking information on you because they're considering hiring you, most likely they're not going to visit your website on a daily basis. But if it is some creep, they may be visiting your page multiple times a day and this is good information to know. Now keep in mind that bots visit web pages all the time and there are good bots and then there are bad bots. The good bots would be like Google bots or Bing bots or other bots used by search engines and you want them to visit your web page so it gets indexed. Bad bots are those that are trying to find out information on how to hack a page, scrub data from a page, and other nefarious things. You can usually just Google the IP address in quotes and get information about where the IP address is if it is a friendly bot. But that information you may find tied to that IP address is an ISP or an internet service provider who owns the IP address. So if they are using a Verizon phone, for instance, the IP will come back to Verizon or it may come back to the internet provider at their home. That IP address may also be tied to a corporation or a company that is doing research on you or I have also seen them come back 
to some government agencies. This is all good information to have, but for the average person, there is little to nothing else they can do with this information. A private investigator, however, should have access to some of the professional investigator databases out there where they can search for an IP address. Now keep in mind that they have to have a legal purpose to run these searches and they will often only work with an attorney as there are many laws against providing personally identifying information for other individuals. And for PIs out there, well make sure you have that legal purpose. Make sure your legal six is covered by working directly with the client's attorney. Something to also keep in mind is that searching an IP address in those databases will provide a list of all people ever associated with that IP address that are in that database. And many ISPs will float IP addresses, so one person may not always have the same IP address, especially if they do a lot of traveling. So there is usually a lot of other cross-referencing and investigation that has to be done. Back to the cookies you use on the web page. They can oftentimes be used to grab the computer's name, the computer user's name, the company's name that the computer is tied to, and other relevant data. Now I would suggest using a professional web developer to set this up to get as much viable data as possible, but many people today have cookies disabled. Most browsers come default allowing cookies, but if they change this, then it may not be as useful, but there are workarounds for that too. You could have a pop-up come up that requires them to allow cookies to view the page. Again, you would want to consult an expert in web development on how to do this. But even if they don't allow cookies, a lot of that data should be grabbed and logged in your website server log files anyway. So you just need to make sure you have a good program installed on the server that allows you to see that data. Here is a big one you want to watch for when reviewing the visitor data on your website, be it cookies or raw data. Look at the referring web pages for your honeypot page. Many times people will send a link to a page to someone else or even themselves. And this can be very telling. You may be able to see that they came from a Gmail account or a Yahoo account or something like that or even a corporate email server. Another statistic you can get to is the local IP address if they save that web page to their computer. And this is great information to have as well. Now one thing to do with the pictures you use is to make sure they are unique, not currently used on other pages. You can use pictures of yourself that are currently on other web pages, but alter them a little so you can tell the difference and give them a unique name. Then you can search for those photos with Google Image Search and by that unique name to see if someone has used that photo on another web page. This can help you identify if someone is using your personal information and why they may be using your personal information. There's also code snippets out there that can be implemented on your web page to see if anyone ever copied and paste data from your website. This allows you to know what and when they did that. Did they grab your email address, your phone number, and your physical address? Sometimes these snippets of code will also tell where they were pasted into, like a Word document or into an email in Outlook or some other software. But there is one trick that is ever important to finding out who is searching for you online. You want to create a link on your Honeypot page to your LinkedIn page. Now I believe this only works if you have the LinkedIn Pro version, but you can get that on a 30 day free trial I believe. If you put that link on your web page with something like more info about me or something like that, when they click on it they will go to your LinkedIn page and LinkedIn will tell you who has visited your page. Now I know at 60 bucks a month this can get a bit expensive, but if you need to know, well, you need to know. And once done, you can cancel that subscription too, and there may be a lot of other benefits to having that premium account. Really quick, I wanna send a huge shout out to all of the PI Guy supporters out there. Thank you so much to my PI Guy premium supporters, Eric Hutchinson, my man, 21 months of solid support. Thank you, kind sir. And Eric Lewis with 11 months, count them, 11 months of support. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it, Eric. And Ivan Weich has been a PI Guy Supporter Plus for 17 months now. Now, check out this video for more free private investigator training.